What's going on traders? Sandra O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is June 4th, 2021. Go ahead and click that like button on this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this content and I will continue to make it for you. Today we are going to talk about the price action in the indices. We'll go under the hood and check out our sectors and style factors as we always do. We'll go through options order flow. We'll talk about sell my trades. Before we get into all that, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. And last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account into any one of my trades. All right, let's jump into it. I'm actually all suited up today. I'm taking some professional headshots for the Pristine Capital website. So yeah, you got me all suited up here and ready to go. Let's do it. All right, so let's jump into today's price action. And where are we here? This was me checking out some Twitter stock. Let's see, box scores for today. We had the S&P 500 as measured by the SPY. Closed up 0.91%, really good day for the S&P 500. We had the NASDAQ QQQ close up 1.7%. Really strong day for the NASDAQ. We had IWM small caps close up 0.43%. And we had the Dow Jones close up 0.54%. So to set the stage for today's price action, we had yesterday's candle for the S&P 500 super bearish. We had pretty much a reversal day. We tagged this 20-day simple moving average. Today we're coming into the trading session. Everyone is you know, getting prepared for this non-farm payrolls number. And really the funny thing about the NFP numbers is if those numbers come out really strong that's like oh yes you know a bunch of people are getting jobs this is so good the economy is getting better but for the stock market that means okay the economy is getting better so less stimulus which is not good for investors so to get the day started off with the bang we had our nfp number out at 8 30 a.m it was actually a miss there was 559,000 jobs created i believe the estimate was for around six hundred fifty thousand dollars or 650,000 jobs created. So bad news for the economy, but that is good news for the stock market. So yeah, really nice day today. And you know, yesterday I was very cautious and I actually took down some risk. After seeing you know this strong price action in the morning, I ended up reallocating to some more trades and really just adding to some trades that have been working for me. And you can see, you know, there's nothing bearish about this day. You can see we finished up 0.87%. We're above the monthly value rate. And what I think is really cool is we actually had that shakeout. So when you get shakeouts, you know, you can have big players that are taking down some risk. Some people get very bearish. They start shorting the market. And then when you get one of these expectation breaker like days, you can get people that just dig their heels in and they remain bearish. So that is actually a good thing in terms of seeing further upside in the market. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. I think that one was super important. And you can see NASDAQ, yeah, was the worst of these indices yesterday. And now today it was, you know, the the last shall be first and the first shall be last. This one was, you know, crushed it. And you can see we're above value now. And really the next levels to the upside, we have our all time highs up here at around 14,000 for the NQ. I think there's a lot of people that don't think the market can make it there. And so I'm looking at those levels into next week and beyond. And especially now, we're at a really seasonally bullish period within the options expiration cycle. We're two weeks away from options expiration. So that's another tailwind for this market. And then really quick, we'll just pull up the Russell. Russell still looking good. Pretty subdued price action here. You can see... Closed well off the highs, only up 0.27%. And then the Dow Jones up 0.53% here. Dow Jones still looking solid. But at this point, I'm more interested in the NASDAQ and in the S&P 500. Let's pull up here. We will go to our market breadth. Market breadth positive across the board today. The only one that was kind of teeter-tottering throughout the session was the small caps. So you can see... You know, really nice advancers, 89% on the NASDAQ, 91 advancers, and 11 decliners. Taking a look at our heat map, 
all of these fang stocks all these technology stocks anything that is duration sensitive had a rip roaring bullish day so this to me is like people were under position people took down the risk the other day and boom everyone's got to react to this nfp number all at the same time so yeah really nice action and then the areas that gave some back we had some of these restaurant names give some back we had, you can see some of these industrials, a little bit red, some healthcare, but overall really solid breadth in the market. Flipping over to our sectors, you can see these are ranked in terms of sector momentum. You can see global autos are at the top of our list. They were up 1.9% today. Then we have energy and aerospace and the defense in the number two and three slots. Our best performer on the day, semis were up 2.43%. Did anything beat that? Yeah, I see software was up 2.16%. But yeah, you can see those duration-sensitive areas in the market really outperformed today. Style factors, we're going to see that same exact dynamic. You can see this quality style factor was up 1.02%. And that makes sense because the FANG names are very strong. A lot of people refer to those FANG names as treasury-like equity investments. So it makes sense where when you get a weak jobs number, the yield curve starts to flatten. You get strength in those quality names. So let's jump into some of my trades for today. I think I put on some really interesting structures today. Let's jump into it. So, you know, I'll run through these very quickly. I didn't do all that much trading today. So I took some Facebook July 16th, 325 strike calls for $12.95. This one, you know, Facebook looks really solid here. You can see Facebook up 1.32% today. This one is knocking on the door of new all-time highs. So I would imagine if this market strength continues and if the queues are strong, I think Facebook will be along for that ride. And then I entered into a butterfly for gold. So I entered, this expires June 18th, the 177 by 180 by 183 call butterfly. Enter that for 67 cents. And so I'm risking 67. My max reward is $2.33. So this is a low probability trade, but a high payout trade. And if you look here, we had this pullback in gold. You know, yesterday gold just got obliterated, but we got a really nice bounce from this 20 day simple moving average. We're above this five day now. And 180 is right up here. That's the target for this call butterfly. So really all I'm looking for gold to do is just kind of float higher. It doesn't even have to get to 180, but really just get back in this prior range right here. So that one expires in about two weeks. And then I also took an iron butterfly in CrowdStrike with that June 18th expiration as well. I took in a credit of $10.71. I shorted the 200 by 215 by 230 iron butterfly. So really what that means is I'm playing for CrowdStrike to be at or near the 215 level on June 18th. Well, I think this is a cool structure is CrowdStrike, this name reported earnings yesterday. They reported they met their earnings expectations, they beat the expectations, and they raised guidance. Not a crazy you know, raise or anything like that, but... By all measures, very solid earnings. This company, though, sold off big after the print. You can see we closed down 4.19%. My assumption is that there's probably a lot of investors that have really been crowded into CrowdStrike. And you know, there was some profit taking after the results. Maybe there were even higher expectations. But really, my thesis for this trade is, hey, we're coming into support here. We have this monthly value area. This is where 70% of the transactions in the prior month have occurred. We're also coming into these key moving averages here. So with this trade, I'm not saying, hey, you know, I'm all out bullish on CrowdStrike. Really what I'm saying is, hey, I think CrowdStrike could stabilize here and then just start to get a little bounce into options expiration. And that one also has a really nice risk reward dynamic. On the stock side, I took Futu long today. I already have some July call spreads in Futu. I believe I have like the 155 by 165 call spreads. 
and I took some common stock as well right off the open today and this is my largest position behind Ethereum. Futu, this one did not disappoint. So I've been talking about Futu really for the past couple weeks. I started getting heavily involved in the stock down here when it was in the 120s and I still like it up here. You can see this technical pattern that's forming. Now it is becoming much more apparent here. And if we look at our weekly chart, this is starting to shape up really nicely. So I'm looking and I'm like, could this one go back to the prior all time high? Absolutely. Could it exceed that all time high? Also, absolutely. Especially if some of these Chinese equities start to trend higher. This name has been showing relative strength within that group. And then I took some Drio common shares for 1878. I closed that out, uh, really just day traded it, closed out for 1901. And this one, I was just kind of seeing what it could do. It's a small cap name. And this one, oh my gosh. Yes, this one ended up closing really strong. I think I closed this out maybe like, what did I close this out, like an hour before the bell? Jesus. Let me see. Yeah, I closed this one out at 241. <laughs> And this one, you know, this just happens sometimes. So I closed this one out around 19 bucks. Did not look strong at all. And then in the last hour, this must have been like a power hour. So yeah, this one, maybe I'll revisit this one next week. Maybe I closed it out for the time being for a small winner. Let's take a quick look. We're going to check out our options order flow here. Let's see what we got for today. Yeah, and I'm going to be announcing next week a new partnership that I have for options order flow data. Right now what you're seeing here, this is what I typically go through. This is Cheddar Flow. And I'm actually using a new provider now that I actually think is a lot better, to be honest. Better and cheaper, so really good. So here we have, let's see our options order flow here today. So we have this, I see some Facebook. CBRL, this is for 2022, let's check that out. CBRL. Yeah, this one, not really my cup of tea. It doesn't really look strong technically. You can see we have some AMC. I see some Ford flow here. And Ford has been really strong. I actually just took down my Ford position yesterday. And you can see Ford has sort of gone parabolic. I'm still watching this name. If we can get some sort of healthy consolidation, I'd be interested in giving it another go. And then Upstart, I see some flow here as well. This will be the last one we cover here. Because I know it's the weekend. Yeah, so this one had a really nice run today. This one I was like, geez, really ripped it up to 191. And then, you know, complete reversal here. This one ended up closing with a red candle. Down 0.48%. So this is a wild name. It's very whippy. Uh, you know, super volatile name. I'm long this one via the pristine capital long-term trend portfolio. And I added it to the trend portfolio, maybe down around 100 here. Be yeah, a really volatile name to trade. So that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all have an awesome weekend. And check this out. So if you're interested in this analysis, you like what you see here, definitely consider becoming a member of the pristine capital trading community. So you can go to my website, it's pristinecapital.net. If you're interested in doing a free trial, you know, I would love to have you in the group for, you know, 30 days free. I think you're going to like, you know, being a part of this group. And, you know, just feel free to reach out to me. You, know, you can use the contact form on the website. You can just reach out to me on Twitter for a free trial. But with that being said, that about does it. Hope you all have an awesome weekend. I'll see you all next week.